But as you pointed out in your book, this is not your first go around with experiencing sexual harassment. Tell me a little bit about your background, you know, what you grew up believing you could achieve in the world as a woman, how you were learned to be fierce, and what then was your first reaction to your first experience with sexual harassment? So I was lucky enough to grow up with parents who told me I could be anything I wanted to be. And if you've never been told that, I'm telling you that today. You can be anything you want to be. Every child should hear that. And I believed it. I knew I had to work hard, but I believed I could. I was a serious violinist. There was no gender discrimination. They didn't care if you were a boy or a girl. They just cared who played the best. Same thing with school. So when I got into the working world, I was like, holy, you know what? My gosh, women aren't equal. We're not paid fairly. We don't get the same promotions. We don't get a seat in the boardroom. What the hell is going on here? And it wasn't that I was naive by any stretch of the imagination. It was just that that was my first experience. And unfortunately, as Miss America, I had two sexual assault experiences with top TV executives and top LA publicists. Um, and I thought that they actually wanted to help me because they thought I was smart and talented. I didn't know that meant getting into my pants. And so in the one instance, uh, the gentleman made phone calls for me all day and then we were in the backseat of the car after dinner and he basically threw himself on top of me, put his tongue on my throat. The next week in LA, the publicist also in a car took my neck in his hand and pushed my head into his crotch so hard I couldn't breathe. It was only after this other story of mine in the last year broke that a woman who I was interviewing for the book said to me, you realize that was assault. And I had never called it that before. And I think this is what we do as women. We bury these kinds of instances that have happened to us because we think that we got through it and we can just overcome. Well, we're not gonna do that anymore because now we're speaking out and we're saying that we don't have shame in talking about this and we have the hashtag Me Too. Have you seen what's been happening over the last 48 hours? 500,000 people have retweeted Me Too and over a million shares on Twitter. Mm -hmm. It's top trending. So I think that that's a huge revelation in where we're moving with this. This is social media at its best, actually, because we are communicating at such a rapid pace and it's keeping the dialogue, the national dialogue, alive on this issue. We're still talking about the Weinstein story almost two weeks later. In fast-paced 2017, that doesn't happen very often. And that's why I believe our culture is finally going to change. 